Ridley Scott returns to the universe he started with this year's Alien Covenant, and as we're about three weeks out from release, I figured I'd do a video on 20 things you should know before seeing the film. The last five years leading up to this release have been filled with various news and rumors regarding the film and its place in the larger Alien universe. Hopefully this video can clear up any questions you may have about Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant is the sequel to Prometheus, and set chronologically 10 years after the events of said film. The story picks up as the crew of the Covenant ship arrives on an uncharted paradise and things go wrong. Michael Fassbender returns as the android David, but also as newcomer Walter. David is an older model who was more of a prototype that made his human counterparts feel uneasy, as he displayed traits beyond that of his programming. Thanks to help from Elizabeth Shaw, his head has been reattached, and he's been left alone on the Engineer's homeworld for years. Walter is the newest android model from Wayland yutani and has been stripped of his emotions and human qualities. His only purpose is to serve the crew. Elizabeth Shaw's fate is currently unknown, but we have seen her dog tags and last transmission in various trailers and TV spots, leading many to speculate what really became of her. The Deacon alien scene at the end of Prometheus will not be featured in Covenants. It was likely only created to service viewers hoping for the xenomorph in Prometheus. Alien Covenant will feature a new creature called the Neomorph. Neomorphs are birthed inside of a host via spore infection, and as we can see, they either burst from the back or throat. These aliens are white in coloration and possess none of the biomechanical features of the traditional xenomorph. They also have no inner jaw and likely feast on victims with their sharp teeth, bearing some resemblance to goblin sharks. The Xenomorph will appear in Alien Covenants, but will look different than those featured in previous Alien films. The filmmakers have opted to dial back the complexities of the creature as it is something of a proto-version of the classic Big Chap seen in the first Alien film. The Xenomorph chestburster is also very different, as this time it's larger and more developed when it actually bursts from the host. The cast of Alien Covenant features newcomers and established actors you may recognize. Michael Fassbender plays David and Walter, Catherine Watterson plays Daniels, Billy Crudup is Orem, Danny McBride is Tennessee, Demian Bashir is Sergeant Lope, Carmen Ayego is Karen, Jesse Smollett is Ricks, Callie Hernandez is Upworth, Amy Simitz is Ferris, Nathaniel Dean is Hallett, Alexander Englund is Encore, Benjamin Rigby is Ledward, Yuli Latukefo is Cole, and Tess Hobrick is Rosenthal. The interesting thing about the characters this time around is that they are made up of couples with a security team. Hopefully this leads to more emotional connection with the crew as they fight the alien creatures. Covenant takes place on the Engineer's homeworld. The crew stumbles across the planet and what they believe is an uncharted paradise, but they quickly find out it is a dark, dangerous place, as the sole survivor of the Prometheus expedition, David, turns sinister. The crew of the Covenant are on a colony mission and are carrying 2,000 colonists in the crowd deck of their ship. Their original destination is a planet named Oragai 6. They decide to land on Paradise after picking up a transmission of unknown origin. Guy Pearce returns as Peter Wayland in a prologue sequence that opens up the film. He will bring David 8 online and the two will discuss creation and the question of who created mankind, the most important question of all. There was much speculation regarding Catherine Watterson's character early on. Many believe she could be playing Ellen Ripley's mother. This has since been proven entirely false by Ridley Scott and Watterson herself, as Daniels is an entirely original character whose similarities end in appearance and attitude. Originally, the film was to be titled Paradise Lost. This was when the direction was still focused on Shaw and David meeting the Engineers, and a story less focused on the alien creature. Discussions regarding this potential storyline were likely during and following Prometheus, but it seems as though the studio and director Ridley Scott decided to take the follow-up to Prometheus down a more familiar path. Regardless of the alien influence on Covenants, the story will be rooted in the Engineers and their civilization as more is unraveled. Speaking of which, Ridley Scott has gone on record in numerous interviews stating that the film will get us closer to the alien and answer the why of the creature. Why would someone create such an evil monster? This film is expected to answer that question along with other mysteries regarding the engineer's race. 
Alien Covenant will feature the franchise's first on-screen LGBTQ couple in the form of Lope and Hallett. Sergeant Lope is the head of security on the Covenant who served in the Colonial Marines, while Hallett is likely second in command. The two can be seen enjoying a party with the crew before entering cryosleep in the prologue short film titled Last Supper. Planned as a surprise cameo, James Franco's role in the film was first revealed last year thanks to AVP Galaxy. He later confirmed his role and his character can be seen in the Last Supper short film. He plays Jacob Branson, the captain of the Covenant and husband to Daniels. A prequel novel is currently being written by veteran science fiction author Alan Dean Foster, who provided novelizations for the original three Alien films. It is speculated that this novel will help shed some light on the events between Prometheus and Covenant regarding David and Shaw. Alien Covenant score is being provided by Australian film composer Jed Kurzil. Harry Gregson Williams was originally hired but dropped out due to creative differences. So far, Kurzil's score is shaping up to be something special, as the previews tease something reminiscent of Jerry Goldsmith's work on the original Alien film. An unfortunate casualty of Alien Covenant's production was Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5. The filmmaker had pitched a story that would essentially undo Alien 3 and Resurrection and bring back Ripley, Hicks, and Newt to give a proper ending to the characters and potentially open the door for Newt to take over. Blomkamp had finished a draft of the script and commissioned concept art but it never moved past the pre-production stage. The concept art only serves to show fans what could have been. Ridley Scott is already planning the next entry in the prequel saga titled Alien Awakening. The script is currently being written and the idea is to begin filming either this year or next as Scott has said he no longer wants more than a two year gap between Alien films. As we look ahead to the future past Covenant and Awakening, things look fairly bright. Ridley Scott has said that a 10-page story bible has been created for the Alien universe on film to help keep continuity between future films. Fox is also ramping up the number of tie-in novels and comic books to hold over fans of the universe in between theatrical releases. The plan is for the current prequel series to end once the films reach the point of Alien and from beyond that, everything is currently unknown. One can only hope that they eventually tackle some adventurous ideas in future films or spin-offs that have only been explored in comics up to this point. So what do you guys think of Alien Covenant, and how do you think it has shaped up in the five years since the release of Prometheus? There were certainly a lot of interesting ideas going around, especially that of Alien Paradise Lost. It certainly seems like a good time to be an Alien fan, as we're getting tons of expanded media in the form of comic books and video games. I know this is a couple years old now, but we got the release of Alien Isolation, which was a fantastic game in the Alien universe, and something that really felt like it could exist alongside of the films. There is also, of course, the upcoming Shane Black Predator film, which is something that is up to debate for a lot of fans whether aliens and predators exist in the same universe, but certainly an interesting concept to explore and something that I'd like to see on film if they were able to tackle a newly rebooted version of the Alien vs Predator concept, because I think that's something that me and a lot of other fans would like to see, just seeing an actual film done properly if they were able to actually cross over the two franchises and throw in some colonial marines in there, similar to something that we've gotten in the highly successful video games of the past. But what would you guys like to see out of future alien films? Would you like to see other variants like the Mantis alien or the Bull alien or things like that? Uh, interesting concepts. Uh, I'd personally love to see a film focused on the Alien King because I thought that was a great comic book, uh, Aliens Rogue. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. And speaking of comic books, you guys should also check out the series called Aliens Defiance and the other series that's currently ongoing which follows Prometheus Life and Death, which is the sequel to Prometheus Fire and Stone and then all those series which it seems like Fox is definitely taking a step to try and create a Marvel style shared universe so it's worth noting all of the expanded media that they're doing. Leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below, how excited are you to see Alien Covenant when it releases in theaters, and let me know when you guys are actually going to see it when it comes out, depending on whatever country you're located in or what area your theater is playing it at. Thank you guys again for watching, my name is Nick, and for more on Alien Covenant in the Alien Predator universe, stick with the Hybrid Network.